Hello students, welcome back. We're going to continue today with the life cycle of a red blood cell. We're going to see how a red blood cell is formed and how a red blood cell is degraded. We're going to need several components. We're going to need the digestive system and showing which components come from it. We're going to need the bone marrow, circulation. We're going to need the organs involved in sensing whether a red blood cell is capable of continuing in circulation. And then within those organs, we're going to need cells to actually degrade the red blood cell itself. And so let's diagram those components. And so here we have the components. I've annotated most of these already. So here we have a representation of our digestive system, the stomach and the intestines. We've seen this before. A lot of these have already been drawn. We have the blood vessel into which those elements enter circulation. We've blown that up here. The elements which are required for the synthesis of red blood cells are for erythropoiesis, or amino acids, iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12. We've already discussed iron in detail. These components move to the bone marrow and shown here is the proximal end of the femur. In the proximal epiphysis, we have the red bone marrow and this is where red blood cells are made. Red blood cells are made in the axial skeletal system and in the proximal epiphyses of our long bones. And so we have the site of red blood cell production, our red bone marrow, and now we have our red blood cells here. The red blood cells stay in circulation for about 120 days. Traveling through the capillaries breaks down the cell membrane. And so over time, the red blood cell membrane will lose integrity. There are organs which sense that the red blood cell has reached the end of its usefulness. And these organs are the liver and this organ here, which I'll identify later. Within these organs, we're going to have cells. These cells, which are actually endocytose or phagocytose, the red blood cells, to break them down. And we've blown that cell up here. And what we'll do, we'll bring a red blood cell here and show the byproducts of its breakdown. Let us continue. There's really nothing new here, except we've added amino acids, folic acid, and vitamin B12. There's nothing new here. The red blood cells, as they travel through circulation, these two organs, the liver and the spleen, sense whether the red blood cells have reached the end of their usefulness. And so let's annotate the spleen here. And these cells in the spleen, which actually phagocytose the red blood cells, these are macrophages. So let's indicate those here. So these cells are macrophages. And so what we've done here is we've magnified one of those macrophages here. Once the spleen or the liver sense that a red blood cell needs to die, then that red blood cell is phagocytosed by the macrophages of the spleen or the liver. For now, I'm just going to talk about the spleen, but it happens in the liver as well. So let's move one of these red blood cells into the macrophage. Let's make this red blood cell a little larger. A red blood cell is just basically a membrane and hemoglobin. So let's look inside of this red blood cell to reveal the hemoglobin. So within the red blood cell, we have hemoglobin. So let's separate these components here. The first thing that happens in the macrophage is that we separate the hemoglobin from the rest of the cell fragments or from the membrane portion of the cell and anything else that's in the cell. Now we're going to break the hemoglobin itself down. We're going to separate the heme from the globin. Since these are all the same, we're just going to work with one of the globin subunits. So the first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to separate the heme from the globin. Now we're going to separate the iron from the porphyrin ring. Since iron is so valuable, we can reuse the iron. Hemoglobin can be harmful to the body left alone, so it must be disposed of very efficiently. Hemoglobin can damage the kidneys. Here we have our porphyrin ring and we have the iron. The iron, of course, can be reused. Let's label a few things here. Here we have hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is broken down into heme on the left and globin on the right. The heme is broken down into the porphyrin ring and iron. The porphyrin ring goes through several steps before it is disposed of. The porphyrin ring is first broken down into a green pigment called biliverdin. The biliverdin is then broken down into a yellowish green compound called bilirubin. Remember, bilirubin is the compound that's responsible for jaundice. These two pigments, biliverdin and bilirubin, are known as bile pigments. 
The next few steps do not occur in the macrophage. The bilirubin actually moves into circulation, goes into the blood plasma, and then moves to the liver and then to the gallbladder. I'm going to show these steps, but just know that they don't occur in the gallbladder. The bilirubin is eventually moved to the small intestines, where intestinal microbes convert the bilirubin to a brown-colored compound. This brown compound imparts the brown color to feces. This compound is known as urobilinogen. And bilirubin is responsible for jaundice. And so this explains how hemoglobin is broken down. Hemoglobin is broken down into heme and to globin. The heme is broken down into the porphyrin ring and the iron. Iron can just be reused by the body. The porphyrin ring is then broken down into a green compound, a green pigment called biliverdin. Biliverdin is converted to a yellowish green pigment called bilirubin, which is responsible for jaundice. The bilirubin is eventually transported to the small intestines where intestinal bacteria convert it to a brownish compound, which gives feces its brownish color, known as urobilinogen. Now let's discuss what happens to the globin. This one is relatively simple. The globin is just broken down into free amino acids that can be reused by the body. Let's also indicate that the iron will be reused. As for the rest of the red blood cell, the non-hemoglobin component, it will be completely phagocytosed and destroyed by the macrophage. The remaining cell fragments will be phagocytized by the macrophage. And so this is the entire life cycle of a red blood cell. In the digestive system, we will take in amino acids, iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12. These components will move to the red bone marrow to produce our red blood cells. Red blood cells will travel in circulation for 120 days, about 120 days. Once the red blood cells are too old to pass through the capillaries anymore, that fragility is sensed by one of two organs the liver or the spleen. Within the liver and the spleen, we have these phagocytic cells, macrophages, shown here. These macrophages take up these old red blood cells. They separate the hemoglobin from the non-hemoglobin components. The cell fragments are then phagocytosed or phagocytized by the macrophages. The hemoglobin, which can be harmful, especially to the kidneys, has to be broken down very efficiently. The hemoglobin is separated into the heme component and the globin component. The globin component is simply hydrolyzed to amino acids and reused. The heme component is separated into iron and the non-iron component, or the porphyrin ring. This porphyrin ring is broken down into biliverdin, a green compound, and the biliverdin is then converted into a yellowish compound, which is responsible for jaundice, bilirubin. These two compounds, biliverdin and bilirubin, are known as bile pigments because they end up in the bile, in the gallbladder. Eventually, the gallbladder discharges the bilirubin into the small intestines, where intestinal bacteria convert the bilirubin to a brownish compound, which gives feces its brownish color. This compound is urobilinogen. And this is the entire life cycle of the red blood cell. Before leaving the red blood cell life cycle, I'd like to make three additional observations. The first one deals with vitamin B12, shown here. In order for the vitamin B12 to be absorbed into circulation across the intestines, we need a special substance. And this substance is intrinsic factor. And so we're going to indicate that one here. And so intrinsic factor is a substance that's needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. The next observation deals with the breakdown of the red blood cells. As the red blood cells pass through the spleen and the liver, they have to travel through very narrow capillaries. These capillaries may have a diameter as small as 3 micrometers. As these red blood cells pass through these capillaries, if their membrane is fragile, they will rupture. And this rupturing process is called hemolysis. And so the process of rupturing the red blood cell is known as hemolysis. And this hemolysis takes place in the spleen and in the liver. However, it occurs more in the spleen. And because so much hemolysis takes place in the spleen, the spleen is often referred to as the erythrocyte graveyard. Due to the high hemolysis that takes place in the spleen, the spleen is referred to as the erythrocyte graveyard. And so this concludes our discussion of the red blood cell life cycle, and that concludes this lecture. I hope that you've learned a lot.